Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today it's time to talk all about speed paint 2.0 metallics. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. Long time fans of the channel will know that I am an elitist. One might even call me a snob when it comes to metallic paints. I wear that badge proudly. I've used basically every metallic paint that's on the market and frankly most of them just don't live up to well actually looking like metal and that's a real problem for me when i saw these new speed paint 2.0 metallics the idea of sort of contrast metallics i was pretty fascinated because as i looked at them and started experimenting with them they were quite liquidy they actually came together pretty well uh and so this led me to say, all right, there might be something here. So today we're going to put Speed Paint 2.0 Metallics through the paces, do some comparisons, and see exactly if these things are a new tool in our arsenal when painting metallic paints. So let's head over to the desk. Let's start experimenting. All right, we're going to be using five metallic paints today. Uh, there are more in this range. The range is bigger, but I thought I'd test with five. So two different steels, a sort of dark steel and a bright silver. Uh, a sort of coppery color, and then two golds. One that's sort of supposed to be kind of a mid-tone gold and one that's supposed to be a bright gold. I thought that would be a, a reasonable test, but do keep in mind there are uh, more in this range. The first thing you'll notice is that they are quite liquid, um, which is great. I, they're not gummy like we get with some bad metallics. I've prepped up 20 different little gut plate shield type things here, and I've primed them all in different ways, and I want to see how the paints react over the different surfaces. Uh, or over the different undershade colors. Uh, one thing to note right out of the gate is the side of the bottle does quite specifically say use over a bright white or a gray. So I know I'm actively going against the recommendations. But what interested me about that was <clears throat> normally with especially steel metallics, you want them to go over a sort of glossy black. So it's actually a bit unusual that you would want them to go over something bright. Normally that quite diminishes the effect of most metallic paints. Um, here, what I'm noticing as I'm applying these over the black is that despite having a really nice metal sheen, um, they are still quite translucent and showing a fair amount of the undershade underneath. So when going over sort of straight black, you're really not getting the effect. You get something pretty muted, pretty dull uh, as far as the color goes, um, which actually could be an advantage uh, in certain cases. Um, if you're looking for sort of a necro gold, a dead gold, something like that, running it straight over black, you actually get that effect pretty cleanly and concisely. When I moved on to the brighter colors here, so this has basically been uh, primed in sort of an ivory color. Um, now the metallics came through really bright and strong and shiny and even the steel colors and the interesting part here about this one was the darker steel over the very bright white color I actually did see the contrast effect kind of happening and you'll you'll see that as we go on as the sort of flow improvers or other chemicals in here did pull away from the very edges and sort of gather some in the recesses so although the quote-unquote sort of one coat contrast effect whatever um like you would get with the matte paints uh is is it's not really there with most of these metallics it is there a little with the darker steel which i did appreciate um as i said before in videos metallics are rarely ever and i don't i don't expect them to be one coat done so i i thought this was it was still nice to see that that effect actually was present to some degree Looking at these, though, what I like is over the brighter colors, they go over in one coat, very clean, very shiny, high reflectivity, high opacity, um, while still also allowing some of that translucence through. I, I, it's very hard to explain because I'm, I'm kind of mystified that I'm both getting a good shine and a good opacity, but also it's still clearly being influenced by what's underneath. And you'll really see that here in the zenithal uh, item. So this was just a standard, these were all just zenithal black to, to, to white. And I actually really like the effect that came out of this. I think for a lot of tabletop type 
uh, jobs for people who don't want to go and you know waste a lot of their life, frankly, uh, on um, you know doing NMM techniques on on metallics. Uh, stuff like how the middle copper came out over the black looks really good, really natural. You get some of that black blue infused tones down in the shadows. Um, the gold is the same way; it turns a little more um, turned a little more blue green than I wanted. But that's going to prompt something later, so you'll see how this kind of moves my thinking as we as we move through the testing. And then finally, I wanted to try it over brown. So this was one of those things. Traditionally, a lot of people have been like, "Well, with your gold paints, you just got to undercoat the entire area in brown first. Uh, I'm not doing that ever. I refuse to do that. That is stupid. Um, I'm not painting something twice just because it needs to be because I'm dealing with bad metallics. What an awful waste of time in your life that is. But I thought, well, how do these things do? Is there a sort of noticeable difference if they're over a kind of mid-tone brown? And what I'll say is I think the results are at best average. Um, where it worked best was, in fact, exactly as what the side of the bottle says. So... Hey, um, truth in advertising, I suppose, or, or whatever. Uh, they worked best over a, you know, mid-tone to bright color. And so you can see them all here. And uh, you can see over the black, how they look kind of dead. You move to the white, you get really bright, intense ones. The zenithal, you get to preserve that nice transmission of, of color. And then the brown, they do get a little warmer. Um, so there is some variation there that is pulling through from all of the different elements. As you saw in the first test, these things do actually have some amount of contrasting nature to them. It's not very strong, to be honest, but I don't really care. I find the idea of doing like the one coat thing with this pretty pointless. Uh, what I mean is like, can I get a highlight and a shade out of one application? With a metallic paint, that's never going to be true. I always feel you need to apply additional tones treating your true metallic metals like non-metallic metals. So I didn't expect this to be magic. But what fascinated me was actually the shine, the finish, and the opacity. And part of that certainly comes from the suspension here, and part of it comes from the fact that these, much like the Vallejo metal color I love, uses aluminum powder, uh, or aluminum pigment, pigment, basically very finely ground aluminum. So most metallic paints use mica flakes ground down. And frankly, mica just doesn't look like actual steel or gold or things like that. Uh, the, normally everything starts from a mica and then it's anodized into these different colors. Um, here we're starting from aluminum powder, which is more expensive, admittedly, but produces a much, much higher quality metallic because A, it's real metal, B, it has a much more natural shine when applied, as long as you get your suspension right. And I'm happy to see in my application so far that it looks like they very much did. However, I've noticed that you have to apply it over lighter colors. There is a real, like this absolutely does show some of the uh, color underneath up through. And so when these go over very bright colors, they actually get really bright and intense. Uh, when they're over dark colors, they get really muted. And this is actually the opposite of a lot of other steels where you would have put them over glossy black or something like that traditionally. Whereas here, you actually get the most intense results over something like an ivory or a white or a, anything bright uh, in that sort of value spectrum. So interesting change from my normal expectations, but honestly, some pretty great results. But of course, we don't paint tiny little gut plates, we paint models. And so here is a, some old rat cast I had converted more than I ended up needing to paint. And I thought these would be great since they're storm cast and have a lot of metal and armor. Uh, and it led to my unusual zenithal priming. So what I did was instead of a standard zenithal of black to white, I zenithal primed it in brown to white using a sort of deep or, or mid-tone to deep brown as an undershade and then a brighter white as uh, the top level. And I thought that would be a really interesting test because in, you know, as I worked with the shields, what occurred to me and what it, what it really seemed was that the, the warm brown tones did give a nice rich color, especially to the gold. Um, but also they, they got really shiny and reflective when they were over white. So I thought, let's put the best of both worlds together. This will prevent the shadows from going blue and turning kind of green when you get yellow plus blue. Hey, that makes green. Um, and I found that I really liked how this came out. And you can be the judge if you, you think this is uh, on the level. 
uh, but you know, overall, I just kind of turned all the gold parts gold. For the steel, I noticed it had a lot less variation over the, the individual elements. Like the steel was pretty true to its color, regardless of what it was happened to be over. It just kind of always looked like steel. Um, my thought here was that if you, you know, dark steel, if you put it over the black, it looks like pretty dark steel. If you put it over the white, it looks like pretty bright steel. So, okay. Uh, the next test was, can you paint over top of it? If you do want to execute those sort of non-metallic strategies. So I thinned down a little Rhinox hide and see if we can get some, some shadows built in here. And I'm happy to say this sort of thin glazes of this Rhinox hide actually worked really well. So layers of paint lay over the top of this without issue, uh, despite how really smooth it lays down. Uh, so that was a good test. And then I thought, okay, let's do some highlighting. So I grabbed some of the silver color and uh, worked it as the highlights on these the various elements of the, the armor. And once again, had no, no issues here. The metals can all go on top of each other and lay on top of each other. There was no reactivation, no nothing like that. No, no negative issues for painting on top of these, either with standard acrylic paints or additional uh, speed paint 2.0s. In all cases, I was able to structure and create my non-metallic infused highlights uh, exactly the same as I would with uh, my Vallejo metal color. And you can see I just kind of worked my way around the figure, both uh, hitting some of the edges as well as, you know, creating some small highlights on the gold. Next up, let's put it to the test. So if we like this stuff, how does it compare against my gold recipe? Um, so this was from a previous video. You can find that linked up above. But this is my complicated gold recipe um, that's meant to mimic what real 24 karat gold looks like. And so I'm going to paint this figure literally half and half. Um, so right now I'm just painting my gold recipe. This is my mix of everything, Vallejo Metal Color and the pigment and all of that, right, on one side. And then I did the bright glittering gold on the other side. And the first thing that I noticed here is that um, this gold like many golds that are out there on the market for miniature paints, is much, much, much more yellow than actual 24 karat gold. Uh, so, you know, real sort of traditional 24 karat gold is not actually very yellow, but I suppose golden armors don't necessarily have to be that way. So really this comes down to taste as to what tone or hue you like in your gold. And I will say there are multiple different uh, hues, including a very green gold, in the speed paint range. So you, you do have your choice as to what you're doing there. Next up, I wanted to compare a little bit of the, the two steel colors. So here I'm using the dark steel. Uh, uh, and we're gonna, this is, this is actually Vallejo metal color steel first. The first thing I apply in all of these comparisons will be the Vallejo metal color. And then on the other side, we will, the second paint will be the, the, uh, the new one. So uh, now we're, we're, uh, going to go ahead and apply the darker steel. And this as well as really showed the difference. Um, I like the, the dark steel from Speed Paint, but it is much more blue infused. Now they actually have an enchanted steel that's even more blue, uh, but this one, that one's really blue. Then I wanted to compare the silvers. So this is just the uh, Vallejo Metal Color Silver we're applying first. Very bright. One of my favorite metal paints of all time as it's so intense and really, really bright. And you notice that the silver here from uh, Army Painter, honestly, when held up to the reflection, looks almost identical. Uh, and that's great. What that means is where we've got the light hitting, we're getting the same intensity, the same shine, the same true metallic reflection. Uh, so, so that's really great. Um, I thought I'd do a little comparison on the flat of the shield just to see if it looked any different there. Again, starting with the Vallejo Metal Color Silver and then we'll do the brighter silver uh, next. Now with the side-by-side -side when they're right there, you'll notice when they're outside of the light's reflection, the silver from Army Painter isn't quite as intense. It's a little more muted, but when put under the direct reflection, what I liked is it does have that nice true shine. And here then you can see the figure nice and half and half. Everything is truly half and half. He split right down the middle and you know, you can see a little bit of a difference in the shield. Again, as I sort of rotate it between the light, though, it looks pretty darn similar. Um, maybe a little more bluey. The golds are a little more yellow, as I mentioned, but they still have a really high shine. 
they still look really really nice um, they've got that reflectivity that you really that you really want to see the final test for these is can they airbrush uh, because obviously Vallejo Metal Color is an airbrush metallic paint and it's my go-to right now and oftentimes you want to put your metals through an airbrush for doing things like tanks or uh, you know vehicles or walkers or stuff like that uh, or anything and so uh, this I'm using a 0.2 needle I wanted to give it the the, the hardest test possible um, a very very small needle this is a this is a 0.2 I thinned this down with my standard uh, mix of flow improver and thinner 80 20 uh, thinner to flow improver I thinned this uh, three drops of paint to or sorry three drops of thinner to five drops of paint and so about a one a little less than a one to two ratio and it came out really really great it airbrushed without a problem I never had any dry tipping nor clogging nor anything like that I was able to uh, work my way around the model I'm working fairly thin as I always do but as you can see, I got a really nice final shine. Everything applied very, very cleanly, very easily. Um, then I go ahead and I'm going to try some of the gold here. Uh, yet again, uh, just doing it over the top. I thought it might be an interesting transition to see how they all kind of look on top of each other. And sure enough, you know, looked great. Nice, rich tone. Came out without an issue. Yet again, all I'm doing is my, my simple, quick, fast airbrush cleaning, just rinsing it out with water. Takes like 20 seconds in between each color change. And I'm not getting any kind of clogging or buildup or anything like that. And you can see, I really like the gold over top of that copper. It really provides a nice, rich tone. Um, finally, I thought I'd lay some silver over the top, just, you know, very, very lightly. And uh, sure enough, again, no problem at all. Uh, all of these different paints airbrushed really, really simply and easily. So to me, they passed every test I could throw in front of them. And uh, here's how he looks, all told, with all of those colors airbrushed on him. Overall, uh, a really great response from the Army Painter medals. So there you go. Overall, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by these. It was a real interesting learning to see how much different they looked working over the different undershades. And oftentimes, most of us, if you're a fan of this channel, if you're like me, you're probably zenithaling a lot of your miniatures. You're not working over straight black. So I think in most of those cases, this is going to work really well. Um, over things like a value sketch or a zenithal or a slap chop, these are honestly going to actually provide real contrast. That's what I ended up seeing when the figure itself has some kind of zenithal transition to it. Because the metallics have that, uh, that translucence to them, you not only get the metallic shine, but you also do get a real change in the tone. Uh, and so I'm interested to continue experimenting with these and see what we can do. But I have to say, these are a new part of my rotation. I don't know if it'll replace my ultimate gold recipe, but what I will say is certainly for things like the coppers and the bronzes, I am all in on those. Uh, these are the nicest tones I have found of these, and they are absolutely going to be part of my regular rotation anytime I'm looking in that copper, bronze, brass area. I think these are perfect. I would encourage you to give them a try out yourself um, just because I, I think they're actually pretty good. So with that, I'll say if you liked this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions I didn't answer, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. Uh, as always, though, uh, if you want to support this channel, you can do so through the merch store below, through any of the links below to purchase stuff, or by joining our Patreon. Uh, a Patreon is, our Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. Thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.